My first point this morning that I want to give you, and I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to look at the first through the fifth verse. Amen. The first point I want to give you is that education is a process encouraged by God. Education is a process encouraged by God. God created our minds and designs us so that as children we would grow to mature, that we should increase in knowledge, wisdom, and skills. God created that process. That's not a man-made process. God created that. And Proverbs chapter 1 tells us this, verses 1 through 5. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equality, to give subtly to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discern, uh, uh, discretion, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. God desires us to learn. Every person doesn't have a right to decide not to learn. You are made to learn. You're made to grow. There are various avenues of this learning process. Some of, some of that learning could be technical skills. Some of it could be on-the-job training. Some of it can be uh, additional learning and skills. Maybe, uh, you know, how we go on for uh, continuing education. And all those things, we're made to do this, to increase our knowledge. Not one day of your life till the day you die will you not be retaining information and growing in knowledge. And here, God desires that we grow beyond childish things. One of the things education does is take us from childhood to adult. Look at somebody and just say to them, we're not raising children. children. How many understand you are not raising children? You are raising adults. They're, They're going to leave your house. As much as you'd like them to stay, just like you left... We, we miss this point as we're raising them, but I realize Emily, Brian, and Stephen, that they're going to leave. We're raising them to leave. Whether it be next door, they're not living in my house. Somebody say amen. amen. They may live next door and on the same property, but they leave it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we love our kids and everybody in here. You just defend them to the end. I mean, they can do no wrong, and we completely understand that. But the, the, the thing you have to understand is that God has told us to raise our families that they won't be childish anymore. Here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, but I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I was to put away childish things. You're to raise adults. Amen. If you raise someone that's living dependently on you for the rest of their life, you've failed. Amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. And parents, don't make your children feel guilty because they make decisions to go on with life. You raised them to do that. They didn't make your choices, and you can't make their choices. You know, at some point, you have to understand this. I I had to come to this understanding as parents. My parents always believed, I think, that they were raising me to help complete their vision. That they had a vision in life and they were raising me that I was going to be around. I was playing music, singing songs and all those kinds of things. And they had done that because they were going to take advantage of that. And they did for a while. But at some point in my life, it was important. I do this with my staff. I'm raising young men in this church, and yes, we're getting benefits out of JT and Corey and those that are here. We're using them as the structure allows for them to be involved at this moment. But I have to raise them for one day doing their own vision. Somebody ought to say amen. If all I see is my vision and I corral everyone and hold them and say, you can't leave because God called me to build this church, then I'll fail them and fail me as well. Somebody ought to say amen. We've got to raise up leaders and people to go. Moms, dads, raise them up to do their own vision. And don't be offended when they do. Don't be offended when they have their own vision. Look at people clapping. They love that. Amen. Well, I do too because, I mean, it's hard. It's hard as parents. You don't want to let them go. And you want them to help you fill your vision. But there's a day when you have to become the one helping them fill their vision. You have to switch gears and realize that it's no more about your vision. It's about their vision. You can still work on yours, but they have their own. Somebody say amen. So we're raising adults. Look at somebody say raising adults. God said that he wants us to be educated. Number two, education's not automatic. 
It is not an automatic process. You can't wake up in the morning. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do the matrix? Now, I don't know if any, some of you are too Christian have watched that movie, but I did, so I have to admit it. (laughs) You remember when the guy was plugged in and they stuck the thing in the back of his neck? If you didn't see it, they stuck the thing in the back of his neck and then they could just download it. He was automatically a karate guy. And he could do karate. A weapon specialist, you know, teach me to fly a helicopter. Push a button, I can fly. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't you love it if that could, kids, wouldn't you just love that? Oh, how cool would that be? You could just take a pill. Genius. (laughs) It doesn't work that way. The process is not automatic. There is no matrix for you to join. Amen. It, was, it must be sought after to be obtained. You must seek it to be obtained. Our brains were made by God to acquire new information until the day we die. And God commands us to seek wisdom and understanding. If we seek it, he will give it to us. If we seek it. Turn over to Proverbs 2 and look at this. Proverbs 2, 3 through 6. Proverbs 2, 3 through 6, he says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifts up thy voice for understanding, if thou seeks her as silver and searches for her as hidden treasure. Wow. It's a search. It's a seeking. We must determine to do it. And so it says, if we seek it, then th- uh, shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Look at that. Isn't it amazing? They're tied together. That, that information you seek after can also aid in you growing in God. Amen. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. I remember we took Stephen and Brian to this basketball camp at Francis Marion this year. We do every year. We go and do the, uh, as many weeks as we can over there. And uh, the coach introduced us to one of the young men that's now a professional basketball player, one of the only young men, there's only been a few, to leave Francis Marion and go into professional basketball. And one of those young men was there that day, and he was assisting in the coaching of this camp. And here's what he said to the kids, and I, was, I thought it was so profound. He said, this is one of the only ones that put in the requirement to go to the next level. Now, isn't that interesting? I mean, he, I mean, he said, this is one of the only ones that was willing to put the effort in to go to the next level. How many of you understand that if you want to go anywhere in life, even if it's sports, you can't not practice? You're going to have to practice. You're going to have to, to work at it. It doesn't just come. It would be nice if it did, but it is not that way. And so it's, he says here, the Lord will give it to us if we seek it. Thirdly, I want to say this, education should give you a better understanding of God. We shouldn't fear it. We shouldn't be afraid of education as if it's somehow going to deter from our relationship with God. The Bible says that you and I can plant God in our families, and when they grow old, they won't depart from it. How many know I'm right? We don't have to fear education. We just have to be in the lives of our children to make sure that we answer the questions that need to be answered. I'm not counting on the school system to teach my children about sex. That's my job. That's the Bible's job. Now, they may teach them things, but I'm going to teach them what God said. Truth will always supersede facts. Somebody say amen. Amen. Truth is what we teach. They'll know the truth, and the truth will make them free. That's why don't, don't skip church. Don't miss out on the house of God. Don't miss out on the sermons. My wife did an excellent job this morning. She does that every Sunday morning. These kids get fed, and we can keep them out of teenage pregnancies, keep them out of jail. Not everyone. We're doing the best we can, but we, with your assistance, with your help. But I will tell you this. These kids that don't have parental involvement in the house of God, they don't come. The, the, these kids that don't have parental involvement in their education, they don't do well. They don't do as well as other kids. You have to get involved. Amen. Don't just leave it to chance. Don't leave the computers at the exposure of your children. Put them in the living room. Sit there and look at the computer screen with them so they're not on pornography sites. I wish somebody would shout. I'm preaching real good right now. Amen. Don't just leave it to chance. Don't just, I mean, if there's discipline issues, we have had them with our children. We've had to go in and have the school time. I know you think we're the perfect family, but we're just a family. And we've had to go in. I've had to sit down and dis. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've had to go in and go through the stuff. I mean, the the the, the traumas of of uh, be, my kids being picked on and all those kinds of things. I've been there. I've gone to the school. Says, but you know, never once have my kids seen me ever disrespect a teacher, a principal, or a vice principal, or anyone in the school system ever. 
They've never seen it. My wife will always educate me on the way in. Now, these kids, these ki- we don't make the teacher mad. She might not like our kid. <laughs> she was a teacher, and so she knows. I mean, if a parent's just a bear, and you don't want to see them coming, then it's going to be hard to love on little Johnny. Go in there and give him presents. We start the year off with bags full of goodies. We walk and we buy our way in. <laughs> Bribery works, doesn't it, Amy? It works. Come on, take them some food every once in a while. Go get a Chick-fil-A gift card. Go love on these teachers. Support them in their effort. If there's a disagreement, send him out of the room. Steve, leave right now. Not right now. Don't leave right now. But if, I, I'm going to tell you, leave right now. We have something to talk about. And then I'll, when the door shuts, I say, now, look, you did my son wrong. I'm going to tell you right now. But we're here to work with you. What do we need to do to make Stephen a better student and to increase his knowledge and improve him? What can we do to help you today? Not fight you today. I mean, there are some, I'm certain there are things that we are going to get into during the school year that you're going to have to really manage and work hard at. But do it as a believer. Do it as a Christian. Show your, I'm not there yet, but so education should give us a better knowledge of God. Proverbs or Philippians 3, 8 through 10 says this is, Philippians 3, 8 through 10. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them as dung, that I may know Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is after the law, but that which through faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power, and in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings be made uh, conformable unto his death. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says, Proverbs 1 7. So education doesn't have to be a separated issue. Somebody say amen. Number four, a proper education will lead to great satisfaction in life. A proper education will lead to great satisfaction in life. Blessing, honor, long life, pleasantness, and peace are reserved for those who find true wisdom and understanding. We find that in Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. Happy is the man. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and a man that gets understanding. For the merchandise of that is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou can desire are not to be compared to her. Isn't that amazing? And so there's happiness in a great education. Look at somebody and say, you can be really happy with a great education. To this day, I have not taken my graduation diplomas out of their sleeves. They're in those little round tubes that look like, you know, pizza rolls. To this day, I've not taken, I don't even, to be honest with you, they're, they're put away somewhere. They're in some cabinet somewhere. I've never hung them on the wall. But I know I got them. I know I completed the process. I have received that completion. I have the self-worth. I have received self-actualization from that degree. It's not something that will give me anointing. A degree doesn't anoint anyone. But it doesn't hinder the anointing either. Somebody ought to say amen right there. But it does. I'll tell you something else. It does enhance your ability to work in the natural world, to work with people. My father was one of the best preachers I've ever heard in my life. I'm not a very good preacher. I don't think I've ever been a good preacher. I'm a great pastor, though. I'm an awesome pastor. Thank you. I thank you. I receive that. (laughs) I am. I am a great, because I have a business acumen, a knowledge of how to run a business, of how to achieve things, how to accomplish tasks and goals. And I receive some of that information, certainly by the things that I've gone through, but I receive the basics of it or a foundation through my education, through my education. This just this this just this last week, we've been dealing with Georgetown. I took the Georgetown campus, a one and a half million dollar facility, beautiful building, right there in Georgetown, right on the golf course. If you haven't been over there, you need to go visit sometime. And it's beautiful. We were able to put Justin in over there. But when we took that campus, we we immediately realized there was a debt on that campus that we didn't know was connected to the building. We wanted to go to the bank and just finance the building. We were going to go down there and just take out the loan, finance the building, and immediately in there, we realized, "Uh uh-oh, there's an IRS debt 
that's exceeding what we can do. We can't do it. There's not enough money for us to pay this debt off, and we don't need to do it. And so I went to work. Well, my education kicked in, and I got in there and started working. Well, two, it took me two years, but on Friday of last week, the letter came. We are no longer in debt. We have a mortgage. I signed the mortgage on Thursday. But see, if you didn't know, if you didn't have the, the, uh, the foundation to help you with these things, then you'd be in trouble. And we need those kinds of things. So education is something we have to seek after, and a proper education brings satisfaction in life. Lastly, learning is work. Anybody that's ever gotten an education, learning is work. We have doctors, lawyers, judges. We have principals. We have school board officials that are sitting in this room. And they will all agree with me today that to get to where they are, to live in the nicer homes, to be in the nicer cars, required some work on this end. It's economic payoff. The, the choice economically for you to defer your income while you go to school is a choice that in the end will benefit you economically Amen. Instead of making $5 or $8 an hour, you can make $130 an hour. It's, listen, you just have one life. It will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ. Why not make it, it, the, the most out of the hours and minutes you have? How many think that's a good idea? You won't get one minute, every minute, every, every, every word I say is one thing that's gone. It won't come back. Why let somebody pay you $8 an hour when you're worth more than that? You are selling. Every day you go to work, whether you are a doctor, a lawyer, a school board official, a trash collector, whatever you are, every day you go to work, every day, every day, even moms at home, every day of your life, somebody is buying a piece of you. They're buying your time. They're buying a chunk of your life. Have you ever thought of that? They buy a piece of your life. Then make it worth the most you can make it worth. Amen. So 2 Peter 1.5 says this, And besides this, give all diligence to add to your faith virtue and to add to virtue knowledge. Add to virtue knowledge. Give all diligence to it. Somebody say amen. amen. Number six, final point. And then I'm going to read two more things that I just came up with. Number six, parents are ultimately responsible for the training of their children before God. Some training may be delegated to others, but the ultimate decision maker is mom's dad's. You know, and a grandparent, if you're taking, whoever's the primary caregiver of a child. Ephesians tells us, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Galatians 1, 4, uh, uh, Galatians 4, 1 and 2. Now what I mean is that as long as the inheritor or the heir is a child and underage, he does not defer from the slave, although he is the master of all in the estate, but he's under a guardian or an administrator or a trustee until the date fixed by his father. But the father is held accountable for his training for, of his child. You're held accountable to train them up. Now, I want you to write down GROW, G-R-O-W, GROW. That's what we're going to do this year. That's what starts on Monday morning. Now, don't miss tonight. I'm only going to have a 45-minute service. We're going to leave. So come pray with me. I think it would be good to pray before we go to school. won't hurt the kids. You can still be ready. Come 45 minutes. But write down GROW. That's what we're about to do, GROW. We're going to grow. Number one, GROW, G, God first. This is how we grow. God first. God first. What did I say? Come on, kids. What did I say? Grow. God first. The first letter in grow? God first. R. Read. Read. The most important thing you're going to do for your educational purposes, and they've learned this, is read. And I can tell you this. You need to read your Bible. Amen. You need to read the Word of God. This year, if you're a young person, you need to start reading. Get your own personal Bible, a study Bible. Add God to your life. Fill your life with God. Amen. Read the Word and read, read, read. Read your books. Read, read, read. What's the second word? So G-R, read. O, obey. Obey. Obey your teachers. Obey your coaches. 
Obey your parents. Obey the word of God. G-R-O-W. How are we going to grow? We're going to have God first. We're going to read his word. Read our textbooks and read. And we're going to obey what we read and study. What God says. Parents, coaches, teachers. We're going to obey. And last, W. Wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to take what you've learned and use it. We're going to use what we've learned. How are we going to, how are we going to grow this year? We're going to have God first, we're going to read, we're going to obey, and we're going to use wisdom. Amen. Say grow. grow. Let's try it again. Ready? Grow. G. R. No, no, say the word, Steve. Read, not just R. Are you ready? That was good, though. All right, ready? All right, grow. G. R. R. O. W. Good job. <laughs> 